Hey, today we're going to go over setting up dope for your rifle and a few different mistakes that some newer shooters make. Um, there's some pretty easy ways to do this, some a some, uh, little bit more time consuming depending on your budget and kind of what you're willing to uh, purchase. So for those of you who aren't familiar with dope, it's data on previous engagements. It's basically just all the data on your specific rifle. Um, so. I recommend trying to do everything you can to get the, the true data for your rifle. One example I like to use of this is myself and another sniper on my team have identical setups. We both have the Mark 20s suppressed, same optics. We're both using the, uh, the Hornady tap ammunition. So everything about this is the same. And you would think uh, that he could just write down my, my data and go ahead and shoot it at the range and, and be hitting uh, pinpoint you know accuracy but that's unfortunately not the case um, when it comes to you know each rifle they're they're very unique so you're going to have identical setups but his dope is going to be slightly different than mine to the point where when we go out to the range if i want to try to use his dope or, or vice versa it's probably going to cause me to miss at, at longer distances so it's also important to know that dope changes throughout the year. Uh, so a, one mistake a lot of newer shooters use, and, and I did this myself when I was pretty new to long range shooting, is they set up a, a dope card, right? So they go out to the range, they bring a bunch of ammunition, and then they're shooting it at different, you know, each hundred yard line from like 100 to 1,000. And they're writing down what the bullet drop is for uh, that distance and usually what you're going to do here is you're going to write you know they'll they'll write down whatever the number is here on the uh the turret problem with that is dope changes pretty drastically throughout the year even if you're living and shooting in the exact same place um so what they'll do is they'll they'll write it down and think like cool i'm using the same ammo same gun same everything and then several months down the road now they're shooting whether it's either hotter or colder and they're missing and they're frustrated because they think it's an issue with their their scope they think it's an issue with the rifle um, maybe they don't have good enough ammo but that's not the case uh, what's happening is is your atmospheric conditions are changing throughout the year so it's important to know what these changes do and how to overcome that uh, the best way that I've found, and a lot of uh, experienced long-range shooters have found, is they tend to gather dope using a Kestrel, right? So this is just a portable ballistic weather meter uh, that tells you really anything that you need to know as far as, you know, temperature, altitude, barometric pressure, humidity, wind, uh, wind direction. Uh, it even helps you out when you're shooting extreme long range when it comes into factoring in the, the Coriolis effect. Um, so the cool thing about this is you really don't have to have a whole lot of ammunition for getting true pinpoint data for your rifle. Um, the best thing to, to do is just, you know, you want to go online, you want to figure out what ammunition that it is that you're going to consistently use uh, because you don't want to spend a bunch of time or money getting uh, data on your rifle set up for one ammunition and then go out and use something different because it's you know the the previous data you have for that is is now useless so you want to go and uh, usually you can find all this stuff online is the all the data for that specific bullet that you're going to be using uh, whether it be you know the the projectile length um, the the grain weight, the um, muzzle velocity, and that's, again, that's different to every rifle, right? So it may tell you on the box that muzzle velocity is 2,500 feet per second, and then you shoot it out of your rifle and you find out that you're shooting at 2,600 feet per second or 2,400, right? So every rifle is going to be a, a little bit unique. Um, so you use your Kestrel to, to true the dope. And what this is, is when you go out to uh, the range and you go through the truing settings and then 
it's going to tell you like okay you've entered in all of the all of the details it's asked for that specific bullet then it's going to ask everything about the rifle whether it's you know when it comes to like barrel length or the rifling twist rate the um, height of the optic from the bore uh, and a few different things like that and then once you enter in all of that it's going to come up with its uh, its own guess as to where that bullet's going to be dropping um, at certain distances so it'll tell you like all right so for this this range um, and this specific setup you should be hitting and this is an example right maybe you're you're going to be hitting at uh, 800 yards at 16 and a half minutes of angle drop so then it's going to tell you maybe to choose a target between say 750 to uh, 850 yards or it might say like you know 825 to 925 so find a target somewhere within that distance and then use the data that it says for that that drop once you've entered in all that data as far as the, the ammunition and the rifle um, the kestrel is going to come up with its own algorithm to figure out where it believes that bullet is going to drop at a specific distance. You're trying to true the dope as far out as you can um, before going into the transonic period. When you are shooting long range, your bullet is going to go from when it's coming out of the muzzle at a supersonic speed. It's breaking, it's going faster than the sound barrier. Um, and once you get out to, you know, beyond that ammunition's uh, maximum effective range, it's going to start switching from uh, going from uh, supersonic to subsonic. And that period in between is the transonic period. And that's where you're going to start having issues with bullet flight and bullet accuracy out at long range. So what the Kestrel is going to do is it's going to determine kind of where that transonic period is and try to bring, you know, bring it in just a little bit. And it'll tell you like, all right, so between uh, I don't know, just an example, 875 to 930 yards, right? It's going to say, choose a target somewhere in this distance. And it might even be something bigger, probably between like 850 and 950. Find a target somewhere within that period or that distance, and then uh, shoot using this specific bullet drop. And it'll give you its best guess. And when you go ahead and shoot, you're going to notice it's going to be either a little bit high, a little bit low, or dead on. Um, if it's not exactly what it says it's going to be, maybe you're a couple inches high or a couple inches low, you're going to go ahead on your turret and make that correction. And you're going to shoot again. And you're going to do this until you're grouping to where um, you want to based on not holding, not doing Kentucky windage, just doing what your optic says. And then you're going to go ahead into your Kestrel and say, okay, so you said it's going to be this, it's actually shooting here. And then it's going to input that data and tell you the corrected and true muzzle velocity. Uh, so once you've done that and save everything into the Kestrel, you can have different profiles for, you know, for that specific round, and it's going to be that round out of out of that rifle. Now, if I'm going to take that and shoot it out of this gun, I've got to true it. You know, it's a whole whole nother thing. We're we're restarting that. Um, but the cool thing about the Kestrel is now you don't have to go and shoot at every different yard line uh, and write all this stuff down and then kind of guess or do math for the in between distances. If maybe you have it written down for 400 and you have it written down for 500. Um, and then maybe your target might be at 475 and you may feel like you need to do a little bit of math to get it just, um, you know, a lot, a lot more accurate than trying to kind of guess between four and 500 with the Kestrel. All you have to do is you go to that specific yard line and you enter it in and then it's going to tell you exactly where that bullet's going to hit based on your true data. Um, so that's that's the best way that I can recommend uh, getting dope, or it's at least the easiest way that I've found when I'm doing that for a new rifle. I know there's different ways you can do it with a chronograph and, and you know, getting the true muzzle velocity of your rifle. Um, there's a few different ways to do that, but I've just found the Kestrel to be the, uh, the easiest route, assuming that's something that you're willing to or able to afford. 
a lot of people also, like I said, they might even true that dope and they want to write it down uh, so they can have a quick range card for uh, when they go out and they're going to shoot long range. They don't want to have to go through the whole process of getting current atmospheric conditions for that day. And just understand if you're going to do that, that's, you know, it, it, it's probably going to work um, pretty accurately for the most part, but they're, you know, depending on when you set up that range card and depending on when you're now using it, you could see some pretty big differences uh, enough that could cause you to actually miss the target. Um, you know, so I, I recommend if you really are dead set on just getting one dope card and keeping it with your rifle all the time try to avoid doing it on you know a, a super you know like the dead of summer or the dead of winter try to find something that's a lot more average for where you live here where i live it's a, a high altitude desert so it gets over 100 degrees in the in the summer and then it can easily drop you know well below freezing in the winter um, those different temperature differences cause uh, quite a bit of a change when you're shooting long range so if i had a dope card that i set up on the coldest day in winter and then now i want to go out on the hottest day of summer and try to use that same data that i had written down from six months ago it's probably not going to work so if you can write down you know a few different dope cards cool like throughout the year whether you do it one in in spring winter um you know summer and fall and then you can have something to go to, but uh, I would just recommend at least, you know, if you can only really, if you really only have time to do one uh, set, then try to do it in like spring or fall or something where it's kind of in between. And then also on a day where it's average for your area, you know, like I live in the desert, it doesn't rain very often here. So I'm not going to go out and try to get a dope card on a super rainy, humid day because that's not common for my area. If that's common for your area, then it's probably something you might want to look in or, you know, it might be something you want to do for, for yours. Um, and then there's a few different ways as to where you can keep this dope, right? You know, I've got it written down in a few different spots. I've got it on my high ground go bag over here. I've, you know, I've got it written down on just a little flash card that I had. Uh, and that way, if I don't have time to use a Kestrel and I need to get a quick... Um, range adjustment I can you know go to that another thing I've done uh, is I don't know if you can see this but I've just gotten a sharpie and I've written down my different data here on the rifle I like that because when you're taping on range cards and things like that uh, they over time can start to to wear off and fall off or get water damaged if you didn't you know seal it just right but the sharpie I've had this on here for years um, and it's just sharpie over the, the spray paint and I've never had to redo it it's always been very um, very durable right you know I'm not going to put it in a place where it gets a lot of wear and tear I'm going to put it somewhere where there's really no reason to be touching it there um, and that's going to help preserve it all right so with all that being said go out and find a method that works best for you if you have access to a kestrel more power to you that's the the easiest and fastest way that i found to get true dope without using a lot of ammunition if you don't have access to a kestrel you don't need it um, just make sure that whatever it is that you're doing is going to be consistent and understand that throughout the year that uh, data is going to change so you may have to go back and, and readjust it or um, look at that again other than that that's all i have for you guys today thank you